In this video, I'm going to compare two methods of capturing small birds in flight. Now, small birds, I mean like sparrows and things like that. I tried to have controlled shooting conditions, which was basically in my garden, photographing the birds near a bird bath or a bird feeder. So those two things attract a lot of birds. So you have a lot of test subjects. Just a quick note about buy me a coffee. I want to say thank you so much to everyone who bought me a coffee because you know what? I bought a new microphone set with all the money that I made from buy me a coffee. And this is a Rode Wireless Go 2. It has two microphones and a receiver that goes on the camera, totally wireless. I can use it on my computer as well as my camera. So thank you again so much. And hopefully my audio quality sounds better as a result. One of the challenges of photographing birds in flight is photographing small birds in flight. It's pretty easy to shoot a small bird on a post or in a tree or things like that, but to actually capture them wings frozen, which is what you want ideally, is a bit more difficult. So the two methods I used was 6K pre-burst, which takes some frames before and after you depress the shutter button. And the other one was super high speed burst one with pre-burst as well. Now, the reason I chose pre-burst is because small birds move erratically and you never know when they're going to actually fly. And my goal was to get them flying and to get them in focus. This is how you set up the different burst modes. First off, you have to make sure that you have your dial here on mode one or mode two. And in my case, mode one is for a regular high speed burst. So I'm going to use um, burst shot two setting. So you go into that menu and it's just in the regular camera menu, page three of five, and you have several choices. I like to use, in this case, I'm using the pre-burst and I don't need super high intervals. I'll just choose high speed pre-burst with electronic shutter. Now to get into the 6K mode, you turn the dial here to 6K and you have to go into your menu. And the next menu here is your 6K photo menu, 6K 4K on page four. You go into that, you choose your picture size. So you can choose 4K or 6K there. I'm gonna choose 6K. It records while the shutter is pressed, records start and stop or pre-burst. And again, I like the pre-burst for shooting small birds in flight. So once you have things set up, all you have to do is toggle this hard switch, whether you're going into high speed burst modes or into the 6K burst. And that's all there is to it, to the setup. Let me just go over my other camera settings. I used autofocus continuous for these tests. And you'll be pleased to know that whether you're shooting in super high speed burst or in 6K photo mode, you are able to use the one area human animal detection focus method. I'll just prove that to you. I'll go into 6K over there and you can see that as well. You have access to that setting, which is also what I used for all of my tests. Also, I shot these in manual exposure and I used a very fast shutter speed anywhere between 2000 and 4000th of a second. And I used auto ISO and I set my f-stop to either f4 or f5.6. I also use my 100 to 300 millimeter lens for all of these tests. And because you're shooting at such a high shutter speed, you'll need a bright sunny day to make this more successful. Another thing is that you are able to shoot both JPEGs and RAW files while in the super high speed burst mode. However, in 6K mode, because you're capturing a video file, you are not able to shoot in RAW. So if shooting in RAW is what you like to do, then definitely choose the high speed burst mode over the 6K capture mode. Okay, so what about playing back? Well, you just play back like normal. Get into your playback mode. And you can see here that I've shot this in 6K. To view a 6K file, you push this button here and you can see that it has a bunch of frames. Now you can cycle through the frames. You can see that I'm plus. The plus means at past the time you press the shutter and the minus means before the time you press the shutter. 
So as you can see here, I'm at like minus seven, minus eight, minus nine. So before I press the shutter, stuff was happening. This is after I pressed the shutter, guess what? <laughs> the bird was gone. So let's say I wanted to take out this frame. All I have to do is hit the menu set button and it will save the image. After your file's done processing, it's saved to your memory card as a JPEG. That's how you extract a 6K file. Let's go back to the playback of all the files and we're going to go through and find something that is just in the regular burst. Okay, so here is the regular burst mode. Let's try this one here. And if you press this symbol right here, it will play through all the frames. And you can see that there's 12 frames in that sequence. But if you wanna play them back a bit slower, just push into the submenu and you hit burst play from the first picture. And again, it plays like a movie, but you can manually cycle through them. There we go. So I think frame number two maybe out of 12 looks pretty good to me. The bird is in focus. To get back into the regular menu, just push the arrow down below. So it's here to get in and here to get back into the main playback. And just an FYI, you can use the control dial to scroll through your bursts as well. So you hit the playback button, you find the sequence you wanna look at, you hit the bottom of the control dial and it will allow you to scroll through each frame individually. So your regular burst mode files are going to show up on your memory card, just like any other JPEG, but I suggest you make note of the frame number so that you can find it easily on your memory card or your computer. Let's do another 6K. So here you can see that it is a 6K burst. Push the 6K symbol and you can scroll through them. And again, you can see here that minus five Minus six is where the action starts to happen. And you can zoom into that frame and have a look. And you can see here that the sparrow is nicely in focus, coming in for a dive. So which burst mode method is right for you for shooting small birds in flight? Well, in terms of 6K photo mode, as you know, you get an MP4 video file and you need to extract frames from that. So it's easy to extract frames in the camera and you can also do it in Lightroom or in Photoshop. And what I found was that I actually preferred extracting in camera because I found the image quality just slightly better than extracting through Lightroom. However, once you have that extracted frame, you can also edit it. So if there's any changes that need to be done, it's super easy to edit that JPEG. As far as the super high speed burst mode, of course you can shoot raw files and you can shoot large, medium or small uh, JPEGs as well, or raw plus JPEG in that mode. However, when you're in that super high speed burst mode, it's easy to take like 20 or 30 photos per burst and you have let's say 90% of those 20 or 30 photos that you're not gonna use. So you end up filling up your memory card on your camera, you end up draining your batteries, and you end up having to delete thousands, and I'm not joking here, thousands of unwanted images have to be deleted off your computer and your memory card. Now it's pretty easy to delete them off your memory card, just format the card and get rid of them all. But on your computer, you have to kind of go through and make sure you don't delete the good files. So that takes a bit more time to deal with. Whereas with the MP4s, take out your good frames and throw out the rest of the files. Just throw out the MP4 because you don't need the rest of them. Extract the good file and get rid. And one last word of advice, when shooting super high shutter speeds, you do definitely need a lot of light. One of the things that my images suffered from 
was noise artifacts from super high ISO. Like I went up to 6400 ISO and really that's too high. And you know, you don't want to spend a lot of extra time cleaning up the noise if you don't have to. All right, that's it for now. Thanks again for all the coffees, the microphone, and we'll see you next time.